Hi and hello everyone. What we have seen so far are either Markovian queuing systems or semi Markovian queuing systems, where at least one of the arrival process or service processes we have assumed to be uh, following the Markovian structure, meaning that uh, exponential distribution was there, right. Even when we generalize to general Markovian or one can do in a similar way to general semi Markovian, we still can retain some amount of Markovian structure by restricting to uh, the either inter arrival distribution or service time distribution to either exponential or something that can be expressed in terms of exponential so that you can handle it in a way, right. But what we will see in this final phase is you know we do not have any of those. So, what we have? We have what we gen generally refer to as general queuing models. Okay, it's, we are not calling it as Markovian or semi-Markovian or anything of that sort. It's general queuing models. So, what we have? We have an input process, a service process, and the number of servers we will restrict to single only. Otherwise, you know, things will become more complex. Okay, so single, but the general input meaning that you know it is no more Poisson or inter arrival times or no more Poisson or Erlangian or phase type or anything we are not assuming it is general it could be any distribution. Similarly, the service time distribution could be any distribution. Uh, in this kind of generality when you look at it obviously, it is not going to be that easy to analyze unless you know you put uh, some such restrictions. Okay. So, what uh, researchers have done is that even within this they try to have some sort of uh, you know restriction on the kind of inter arrival times that you can have or the service time that you can have so that you can get something out of it right that is always there ok. Uh, but and that is a way one should look at as well right. But we will try to see in such generality itself like how one can handle and how uh, you know difficult it is and the reason why then people want to look at with some restrictions would be clear to you in that sense. Okay. So, what we consider is what we call it as G G 1 queues. So, it is a general input, general service, single server queuing systems. We still have this inter arrival times or IID same as the service times are also IID and they are mutually independent I mean inter arrival times and service times they are all independent of each other. The inter arrival times uh, the distribution is we are giving it in terms of this A which is the CDF of the inter arrival time they are IID. So, it is all of them have the same A. Similarly, service times have the CDF as B right. As we said though because of in such generality we do not expect any specific structure uh, you know for the model to be there, one can still obtain some results ok. What we will obtain it is uh, what is called as an integral equation which is basically called as a Wiener Hopf uh, type integral equation for the stationary distribution of the waiting time in Q of an arbitrary customer. And this is also called as Lindley's equation or Lindley's integral equation. Uh, this uh, work because it is called as Lindley's equation in queuing theory mainly because of the contribution. All of these are contributed by Lindley in 1950s. So, this that is why it is called as Lindley's equation and this also another approach of course, this approach you can use it now for your semi Markovian model or Markovian model anything you can also use this approach right. It should result in the same uh, expression that you would expect to have right. So, that is why this Lindley's integral equation approach is also one of the approaches to handle say semi Markovian systems apart from embedded Markov chain supplementary variable this is also another technique that one can say ok. Uh, for more details on this GG1, one can look at the single server Q book uh, by Cohen, but many of those results are beyond our scope. So, we will restrict to something which we can handle, but in this lecture what we are going to see is uh, things are little complex obviously. 
this is just to show you that you know how complex things can become in if you want to handle it in such generality and in the later lecture uh, we will try to see like what we can obtain in a easier way okay so in this case we just try to exhibit that but you know we just want to see how one can analyze in that so that's what you know you want to see but this requires the idea of how one can solve this wiener hop kind of integral equation and so on which uh, you may or may not be knowing but let us not worry about it you do not need to think too much on that so nevertheless you can just fall see like what is going on here right that is what is more important but if required obviously you will go deep into that to understand and if you have to analyze it but at least you should have a feel of you know how things can get complex in such situation and how one can handle it right that is what is the idea of uh, this particular lecture. So, let us get started. So, these are this is the background that we have here. Now, what we are trying to do is that this Lindley's equation is what we will try to obtain which is an integral equation of Wiener Hopf type for the stationary distribution of the waiting time in Q of an arbitrary customer. Okay. So, we start with the relationship between the line waiting time, the waiting times in the queue or line waiting time or line delay, right? It is what is the common word that we use, uh, which we call it as WQN and WQN plus 1. So, we want to frame or formulate a relationship between these two, which is of the nth customer what is his line delay and n plus 1th customer what is will be his or her line delay right. So, now this is valid for any arbitrary gg1 problem what is the relationship the relationship is if you want to look at what would be the line delay or the delay in q or waiting time in the q for this particular arbitrary customer of the n plus 1th customer is would be equal to this what is this his line delay would be the nth customers line delay plus right the service time of the nth customer right minus the inter arrival time between the arrivals of the two customers. So, here is specifically between nth and n plus 1th customer is what this T n is right which you can see suppose if this uh, has to wait for say 5 time units okay now what would be his waiting time n plus 1th waiting time of course this went for uh, service for 3 units so 5 plus 3 8 and the inter arrival time means when the next customer arrived right if it is uh, after 2 units so then his total waiting time would be 6 units right so it's obvious you can see and this will be true only if this is greater than 0. If this is less than or equal to 0 obviously his weight in the de delay is 0 which means that system has become idle already right if this quantity is less than or equal to 0 right. So, that is the relationship that you can formulate between the line waiting times of the nth customer and the n plus 1th customer in terms of the service time of the nth customer and the time between the arrival of nth customer and n plus 1th customer which is T n which together you can write it in terms of this either this is a maximum of this or this quantity one can write it. So, this is the relationship that you have between W q n and W q n plus 1 right. So, this is what we have said what is S n and what is T n. Now, this stochastic process from this relationship it, itself right because we are assuming that the service time inter arrival times everything are independent. So, this W q n if I look at this as a process this is a discrete time Markov process since the behavior of the n plus 1 th quantity from this process is only a function of the value of w q n and is independent of the prior waiting history and the other ones are all independent of this right. So, this is a discrete time Markov process that is what you can observe. 
Now, from the basic probability argument, you want to write this quantity, right? In this analysis, you see slight notational difference that we are using it. We are calling this itself as this W q n plus 1 within bracket when we put t as far as this g g 1 business is concerned. That means, we are looking at the distribution function of this random variable that is what we mean that is basically the line delay which is w q of n plus 1 of the n plus 1 th customer is less than or equal to t is what we are using it this notation. Because this Lindley's or g g 1 analysis this is so uh, it has become so standard and common to use this w itself. So, we are following that there is nothing other than that uh, reason that why we have we cannot change ok. And this one right this is less than or equal to t which means there is some delay which is 0 and then strictly greater than 0, but less than or equal to t is what this probability is. So, this quantity right if I go back this equal to 0 if this is the case right. So, that is corresponding to this uh, probability plus this probability together then this is equal to less than or equal to t that is what is here right. So, essentially this is less than or equal to t is what uh, w q n plus 1 of t is basically this quantity where the w q n s n t n they are related in this way w q n plus s n minus t n less than or equal to t is what this probability. Now, this difference that is the service time of the nth customer and the service time or the interval time between n and n plus 1th customer. Suppose, if this is difference if I call this as some u n and if you call u n of uh, x as this as its c d f then this whole quantity you can think of it as if it is the sum of w q n plus this u n this random variable. Now, if this u n has this as the c d f and w q n has this as the c d f as we are given here, then this probability right can be written as the convolution of these two quantities sum of these two quantities w q u n in this uh, sum of these two distribution. So, this is what you will get as w q n plus 1 of t equals this quantity. Suppose, if I call this as some random variable u, then this is w q plus u, its distribution is w q t and u, u of x. So, that is what you are writing it here. So, this is the convolution of this right. So, this probability. So, the left side which is this, the right side is this. Now, in the steady state, we assume that uh, when we assume these interval times and you know, service times, we generally assume that uh, it has a finite mean and as well as finite variance. Uh, that is what normally you encounter in practice. So, that is we assume and the mean for interval time is always you assume to be 1 by lambda and uh, for the si service time the mean is assumed to be 1 by mu. So, this rho is basically still lambda by mu and if you for steady state we need the stability condition as rho less than 1 and under that situation that the two waiting time CDFs mu must also be identical which means that this and this as you take n tends to infinity and we denote that w the CDF of the steady state waiting time in q distribution to be this. Remember earlier we the random variables that random variable we call it as t q to denote the line delay and f t q as the c d f of that random variable, but we are slightly changing the notation for this g g 1 model alone which is basically we are denoting it by this quantity itself. So, that is what we read observe the difference in notation over what we have been using so far with respect to this particular random variable and the corresponding CDF. Now, if you take limit n tends to infinity then what we have this side you know is basically becomes w q of t and the right side is also this is also become w q of t 
d u of t is what then you will get for t greater than or equal to 0 and 0 for t less than 0. This is what is called as Lindley's equation. Of course, you can write it in different form. So, the same thing you can also write it in this form. There is you know one, one another form or you know other forms also you can write it where whatever is convenient to you one can work on it. So, this is what is what is called as Lindley's integral equation because this is integral equation because you want to determine the quantity w q of t, but w q of t is not only appearing here, but it is also as part of uh, as an integrand within this integral. Whereas, this u is given in a way, right. So, this is what is that integral equation and this is can also be written in a modified form in this, there are other modified forms also one can write, where this u is again the equilibrium version of this u n, which is basically the convolution of s and minus t, which is basically can be written in this form. Okay. So, this is if I can solve this integral equation, say in mathematics, there are in many areas that problems, the solutions for which can be obtained uh, as in a functional form as in integral equation and solving that integral equation, we can obtain the explicit solution. So, here also what we are looking at is the line delay distribution and that is given in terms of this Lindley's integral equation or simply Lindley's equation, which is a wiener hopf type uh, integral equation. So, a solution to this will give me the distribution of the line delay, uh, line delay in this G G 1 model and once I have this distribution of line delay, I can obtain the average and by Littles law and other stuff, then I can obtain the, uh, the other three quantities as well. So, the, the basic four quantities one can obtain once I have this, right. So, that was the idea. So, this u x is but basically the convolution of these two because this is u the random variable is basically s minus t. Okay. So, thus what is our conclusion at this stage is that the distribution of the line delay depends only on the distribution of the difference between the service time and the interval distribution rather than on the individual distributions, right. Because this w q involves u not a and b individually right Be but this u is given by this expression now like one can have you know the same u for different b and a possibly right so we are not inter worried about what are this individually distribution what is that we want is this u once we have this u this distribution then this equation can be solved to get the CDF of the line delay. That is what we see ultimately in out of this Lindley's integral equation. So, this is the main uh, quantity which we call it as Lindley's equation, right. So, that is what we see that line delay depends on the difference between this s minus t, basically it depends on u, u is basically s minus t rather than uh, individually on S and T is what we are seeing it here. Okay. So, one has to solve this to get uh, the distribution, the line delay distribution. So, let us see how one can solve that. Okay. If uh, this looks like a you know convolution, but it is not exactly so and it is wiener hopf integral equation, now how one can solve this. Okay. To solve such an equation, what we do is we define a new function which is also sometimes called complementary waiting time because you know from the look of it you know you know this is defined for t greater than or equal to 0. Now, in the reverse way for t less than 0, you can define it uh, in this way, you call this w q minus. Okay. So, you define you need not worry about what do you call this function, but you know it's just that another function that you are defining. Then this and the Lindley's equation, this quantity if put together, you can write it in this way because one is zero on one side of it. So when you sum these two, then you will get this for all t between minus infinity to plus infinity. 
this is what you get which is basically wq minus plus wq wq is given by this for t greater than 0 is equal to this for t less than 0 it is this here for t less than 0 it is this for t greater than equal to it is this. So, when you sum these two you will get this ok. So, basically what is this wq minus is the portion of the CDF associated with the negative values of wqn minus s minus t when there is an idle time between n and n plus 1th customer right. Because in see because our distribution is on the non-negative side, we put the whole mass at zero and we call that is some quantity. Even you have seen in MM1, there is a mass at time zero. Now, if you distribute it to our the negative real axis, what you would get is what is basically you will get from this expression. This is that function only. One can relate uh, to that quantity. Okay. So this is what is the you will obtain after defining this. Now. It turns out that it is easier to try to obtain WQT for T strictly greater than 0 that is basically the positive part. Since WQT is not continuous at 0 but has a jump equal to the arrival probability A naught so that WQ0 is A0 or in general right because here we cannot talk about is equal to P0 unlike in MM1 because you do not know whether this A is equal to P, but at least this is true. Okay. Now, for which what we require is that to determine you know this quantity base ultimately we want to determine this right. So, to do, to do that what we require is that uh, this two sided Laplace transforms you know do not worry too much on this what are these how it is different and so on. It just that in Laplace transform you saw that it is defined from 0 to infinity. So, this is on the both side you are defining it. You can think of it as if this is an integral over minus infinity to plus infinity e to the power minus st w q t dt rather than 0 to t you know. If you want more to know about it you can explore no problem, but that is what it is right. But this quantity right would be equal to this because W Q T is in the other, other side it is 0. So, that is what you know you will get here right. So, this is what is the two sided Laplace transform of this W Q T is what is this you denoted by W Q bar of s and W Q minus bar of s is again the same thing, but this is 0 on the positive real axis. So, this integral would then simply become equal to this that is what. Similarly, let us call u star of remember bar we are using for Laplace transform star we are using for Laplace TJ transform. So, this u star of s is the two sided Laplace TJ transform of the u right suppose if we denote it this. Now, what we do we take this equation we take this equation and we take the two sided Laplace transform of both sides of that equation. So, the left side is simply this plus this you will get and the right side. So, because why do we have to take two sided because one is defined on in the negative real axis the other is in the positive real axis. Now, when we take two sided then automatically this will boil down to this and this on their respective domain. So, then both the whole equation can be handled right because Laplace transform or Laplace TZ transform you know can be handled the normal one only if uh, the function is defined on the positive real line, but here on the both side it is there. So, that is why we have to take the two sided version of them fine. Now, on the right hand side, right hand side is this quantity we want to take the Laplace transform the two sided Laplace transform of the right hand side right which is basically minus infinity plus infinity e to the power minus t minus x times this quantity e to the power minus s x d u x t right just the definition whatever you know you would imply here you know you are putting it here right. Now, this quantity now look at this function this function is 0 for x greater than or equal to t right. So, one can easily extend this t to even infinity right because this is will be taking value 0 beyond t for all x right 
x greater than or equal to t this is equal to 0. So, this is equal to 0. Now, once you put it in this form you can see that this breaks into product of these two things and this is now the two sided Laplace transform of this and this is the, the two sided LST of u is what then you are obtaining it here right. So, the right side is this right, but u already you have seen now this is what you are obtaining the right side, but now u is the CDF of the difference of the inter arrival and service times and hence by the convolution property must have the LST equal to the product of the their transforms, but then this is one is yes the other is minus t. So, instead of yes for that uh, uh, arrival you have to put the variable as minus s and for service you will return is yes. So, this u star of s is basically would be given by a star of minus s and b star of s because this is s minus t, s is service time and minus t is negative of the service uh, inter arrival time and inter arrival time lst is a star and service time lst is b star. So, you will get this expression right it's just that variable you know you can change and then you can see that this is what you are seeing here. So, u star of s is this. So, u star of s is basically equal to this. Now, if I plug in this the left side of this equation 1 is the L the two sided Laplace transform of these plus this which is equal to this quantity right this w bar q minus of plus w q bar equal w q bar a star of minus s and b star of s from which we can obtain this w bar q of s to be equal to this quantity right. But again here, so what we have now done is that this the Laplace TJ transform two sided version of it of the weight line delay distribution CDF you have expressed in terms of this where you have involved the arrival time distribution and the service time distribution. In addition you know you also have involved one other quantity which you have defined it in, in this way right again in terms of w q. So, you are going in a cyclic way if you look at it, but you are defining this in terms of this. So, that also involves in a way this quantity right. So, what this is what is the main crux here. This is known from the problem, this is known from the problem. Computation of this to determine this is what is uh, important here. Okay. So, therefore, what we are seeing up to now given any pair A and B for any GG1 model, we can theoretically find the Laplace transform of the line delay as given here, but what is required? The requirement is that this w bar q minus of s this is the primary difficulty in this computation you have to de determine this quantity and this requires often uh, the concepts from the not just the basic theory even slightly higher level of uh, theory of complex analysis or complex variables. But there are some specialized procedures say for example, a spectral method or some such thing. If you assume more on something on the inter arrival and service time distribution, say for example, if you assume that the transforms have this rational form for this arrival and service time distribution, then one can adapt a slightly easier procedure to get this and hence the line delay transform and by inversion of that you can obtain the uh, the CDF of the line delay random variable right. So, this is what is the essence now right given, but again you know solving Linlay's equation this is the process. Now, this requires that you define a new function and its determination is what is the main bottleneck in the determination of the line delay, but now you are explicitly used A and B in this form. So, this is another a major quantity that that is why you know we might put it in the box right. So, this is what is uh, is most relevant once I know given A and B if I know this then I know this that is what it is. So, I determine this one ok. So, in general it is difficult. So, there is a difficulty main difficulty is determination of this quantity 
Okay. Now, to understand, to show how you know that can be determined or how it can be worked out, we will take up the very simplest case of this MM1 model. Okay. So, from GG1, now we will go to MM1. So, just to show the working as to how one can determine that particular quantity, which is WQ bar minus of S. So, to show the working, let us take this MM1 itself, meaning the interval times are exponential, service times are exponential. Interval times are exponential with parameter lambda and hence A star of minus S, you know, we directly write it down to be this. And similarly, service time distribution is this and its transform is this quantity. Now, using this equation, right, we have to determine u, which is the difference between this S minus T, right service time minus the interarrival time distribution. So, which is basically given by this expression, which after plugging in it here like this is equal to this d a of y minus x lambda e to the power minus lambda y minus x d y for x less than 0 and for x greater than or equal to 0, you will get this right. And hence, this quantity because you are using this relationship or this expression, you are only simplifying this by plugging in what is because u is needed in any way. So, b and a substitution we are trying to get u. So, u is then once you simplify this you will get this as mu by lambda plus mu times e to the power lambda x and for x greater than or equal to 0 it is 1 minus lambda by lambda plus mu times e to the power minus mu x is what you will get as this u x function right. U x so, you are determined given a and b, you can you have to first determine u, the function u. Now, once I have this, now because this w cube minus of t is given in terms of u, right. So, that means w and also w cube, but u is required to define this uh, new function, which is complementary CDF in some sense, right. So, this is quantity. Now, once I have this u, then w q minus is given by this, which is again in terms of w q. Now, ch change of variable will give you this expression, right, will give you this expression. Again, you can take it out on e to the power lambda t out, then what you will be left with is integral 0 to infinity w q of u e to the power minus lambda u times d u. But what is this quantity? this quantity is nothing but w bar q of lambda. So, basically you have this quantity right w q minus of t is depends on now w q bar of lambda. So, we have to now find this quantity which is basically the Laplace transform of this w q t. Okay. So, how do we do? For m g c q we have easily that uh, pi n q, pi n we just said that departure point probabilities q is we are looking at the q size rather than the system size right. n in q just after a departure is given by exactly the same argument in terms of w q. We would have written f t q of t there, but here it is w q t is what the notation that we are using. So, we are using it in that. Now, when this g is equal to m and c is equal to 1 as the case here this boils down to this which is equal to this quantity. Now, right, you just have to substitute this for pi 0, we are taking it n is equal to 0. So, you will get this which is equal to pi integration by parts that you know you can get this quantity. Now, this quantity if you look at this quantity alone, now we see that as t tends to infinity this quantity is 0 e to the power minus lambda t. Also, since we are only concerned computationally for WQT for strictly greater than 0, let us make this to simplify the analysis. But at the end, we will see that this is actually equal to P naught, which is 1, you know, 1 minus rho is what is going to be. But for analysis purpose, because we are interested only on T for T strictly greater than 0, so we will make this for simplicity. In that particular case, what will happen? This whole term will vanish. That is the idea. That is what you know we wanted to happen. On the one side, when you take infinity, this is going to 0 and the other side, when it is goes to 0, like this will be equal to 0. So, this quantity 
would then become lambda times w q bar lambda is what is this. But what is this quantity? That quantity is basically probability of 0 in q just after a departure which is basically is p0 plus p1 and that p0 plus p1 you know. So, that is basically plus 1 minus rho times rho. So, which is basically 1 minus rho times 1 plus rho because we are doing with uh, we are dealing with the mm1 here and hence this is what is that quantity is. Now, once I have this I can substitute here right I can substitute here to get this distribution which is what is the function that you want to determine which is completely determined now once I have this substitute then I will get this. So, this is the expression that, that now you are having it here right. So, this is what you have now this quantity if I in with have which has transform as this quantity right it is just that this quantity will become this quantity right this is what is the transform. Now, putting together now everything in this equation because we said this is the equation to determine this w q bar of s. So, we determined this plug it here plug it these quantities this is this quantity and lambda by lambda minus s mu by mu plus s is what these two quantities minus 1 you simplify you will get this you, because you will simplify you will get this, but then again use partial fraction to expand this to this form. So, that now when you you know invert inversion is easy right this is 1 minus rho because the Laplace transform of 1 minus rho by s yes, if you take it inverse it is simply 1 minus rho right. So, that is what then you have and this is the inversion of this quantity. So, you will end up here now you can realizing that you know w q 0 is basically 1 minus rho. So, we see that the result is the same as the one that you obtained for mm 1 ok. So, this is how you know you work when you have this kind of gg 1 even for mm 1 things were complex, but you know even if, if you have to use other general distribution things are going to be you know much more complex, but you need more ideas from complex analysis theory to determine this quantity whatever you know this quantity that is what is the main point here. So, what is the summary here in general analyzing g g 1 q's involves complex analysis as well as the transform inversion processes right because you want to get in the time domain. So, you need to get if you want to get directly mean of course, you know you will get that ok. Generally involves these two and these two procedures are complicated and are very much involved it is not that easy to see. So, in many cases we need numerical methods to perform the transform inversion. So, there are approaches available to numerically invert the transforms, but Laplace transform inversion is uh, not a easy thing to do unlike the Fourier transform inversion. So, there are issues involved with that. So, that is why it, it also involves lot of effort on that side, but what we can do is that you know rather than getting this kind of computational distribution and hence the mean one can maybe try to get some kind of bounds and approximations uh, for the analysis of such g g 1. We are not going to take it up this approximation in our scope, but we will talk about little bit about bounds for the performance measures with respect to g g 1 and how that can be easily obtained which can give us a lot of uh, ideas about the system under consideration which many cases might be sufficient enough to handle at least in the broader picture ok. So, that is what we might take it up next. So, as you can see the complete analysis involves lot of uh, effort uh, from and you require more ideas from different fields of mathematics to do that kind of analysis that is what you know we wanted to highlight in this and that probably like you know you would have got an idea of this ok fine thank you bye.